Hey guys, and welcome back to the Unfiltered Gamer Card Game Review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Last One In. It is a game that is for two players. It takes about 45 minutes to play and it's for ages 10 and up. In the game Last One In, you're going to be playing as survivalists in a post-apocalyptic future. And you're going to be trying to secure houses and little, like, basically structures to place in townsfolk. While you're doing that, of course, zombies are going to be coming in because your opponent is going to be placing zombies in your houses. And you're going to be trying to place zombies in theirs. Now, if there's a certain amount of zombies in their area, they're going to lose the game and so far through zeros as well. However, if you're able to secure enough of your uh, towns, as long as well as people or inhabitants inside of it, you're gonna win instead. Let's go ahead and take a look at the game and the board included. So here we have the game, last one in, and as you can see, it comes with a board and it comes with two different separate decks of cards. It also comes with a couple die and it comes with some tokens. In the game, you're gonna need two decks. Uh, one deck is going to be the town deck, it's buildings, and you get to choose between buildings throughout the game because you're gonna need to be putting civilians in them. You're also beginning a big deck of cards here, which are gonna come with with zombies and neutralizers, civilians, and some other stuff as well. You're also going to have this little stack here of cards. There's five of them. You'll be able to choose from them or from the deck, and you'll be placing them into either the zombie horde area of your opponent, or of course the open buildings where you're putting your civilians. On the sides here are going to represent additional civilians, which are going to be these little tokens here, or additional zombies, or whenever you remove them, you're going to be changing the way uh, in which you're going to be having zombies in the game. Now the game is going to be over when you can put in a hundred zombies in somebody's horde, or if you can claim 50 civilians in your buildings. As you secure your buildings, they're gonna go into the safe zone along with the civilians, and you'll be trying to do that. All right, let me tell you how the game is played and the turn order as well as what you can do. So to begin the game, you're gonna be getting five cards, three of which are from the zombie civilian deck and two of which are from the building deck. You're gonna be on your turn able to place a building down, and then after you place a building down, you can go ahead and choose to use the ability. If you don't have a building or can't play when you need to play one, you can instead draw a building as opposed to playing a civilian. If you already have one, you can play a civilian down on your building. The civilians all have their own unique numbers on their card and that will signify how many civilians it has and you're trying to obviously accumulate enough civilians in the building to lock it and make it safe. After you play that, you can go ahead and play a zombie card. Zombies are playing your opponent's horde and if they get 100, they're going to lose the game so zombies can be nasty. After that, you can then choose to play a neutralizer card. Neutralizer cards are going to be either defenders or they're going to be lurkers in which you're going to be able to play cards that will uh, basically remove the civilians from your opponent's side, removing zombies from your own or simply playing zombies or civilians. Kind gives you a choice between the two. After that, you're going to end your turn, discard down to five or six cards, depending on how many cards it is, I believe, and have your opponent go. At a single time, if somebody has locked down enough buildings to acquire 50 civilians, they win, or if the lurkers pop up and the zombies pop up, up to 100 in either player's pool of zombies, they're going to lose the game. Let me go ahead and show you a couple rounds of play and how it goes. So we're now back to the board as you can see and we went ahead and set it up already and you can see there's five cards here. They come from the top of the deck here and whenever you take one from here, which is called choosing, you're going to place down new ones for people to choose. Also, there's a thing where you're going to be drawing cards from here and that's going to be depending on the building you play. So to begin your turn here, we're going to be using uh, this character first, this player here. And he has two buildings, got a 15 and a 20. You need 20 civilians for this one to go to the safe zone, you need 15 for this one to go. Let's start off by choosing maybe this one here and we'll place it here. That says that you can either choose two cards from here, this little pool of town square, or drawing three from here. Now this player is probably going to go ahead and choose to, uh, we'll choose to do the choose, which is going to be one, and then place a new one out, and then how about two, another civilian. After he's went ahead and done that, he's going to be able to play a civilian uh, after choosing to play an ability here, which there isn't one, and he'll play a civilian, that's going to go over here. That's three out of twenty, he needs seventeen more to lock this and put it in the safe zone. Then he can choose to play a zombie, which he will, he'll play this zombie into my horde, that's going to be twenty zombies for me, which is really close, one-fifth of the way to losing. Then he gets to play a neutralizer if he has one. He has one right here. Now a neutralizer is interesting because it can be played as either a uh, civilian, which is for two, or this one over here is a zombie for two. It can also be played as a defender or a lurker. This one here says a defender. Attack up to 15 zombies in a pool. That's pretty good. It can kill 15 zombies. So in this case, if I had this card on my side, I could use this to get rid of 20 and put down five. And in that case, I'd actually use these to signify the five zombies left over. And that's what the tokens are for. However, he doesn't need to do that because he doesn't have any zombies. So instead, he can go ahead and turn this over. This one here says uh, opponent loses five civilians from their buildings, uh, and he doesn't need to do that either. So maybe he'll just go ahead and choose to keep these cards. He's going to go ahead and keep his hand here, and if he has uh, six or more, if he has more than six, he's going to discard, and if not, he's going to keep. Then, of course, it will be my turn, making sure that every single card in the town hall is available. I'm going to go ahead and look at the cards here and see what I've got. I've got a building here. This one's for five. Choose one or draw two, and it says during your turn, you may repeat either phase three, four, or five. 
five, playing either the zombie, the neutralizer, or a civilian. Uh, we'll go ahead and choose this building, though. That is a choose four or draw two. Interesting, huh? How about I go ahead and just draw two cards? I don't need a whole bunch, because remember, whenever you're discarding cards, that's actually going to affect you negatively, which I'll talk about in a little bit up above. But uh, I'll go ahead and draw two, and I've got two neutralizers. I'll play this five civilian. That's going to actually lock this building and move it over here. And then, of course, I can go ahead and play zombies on a zombie horde. This one says the targeted player chooses a zombie card from the town hall, adding it to their zombie pile whenever I put this in. So he'll go ahead and choose one of these and he'll put it in. And uh, then one of these will come out. And of course, the bottom one says that this card, can only, this card can only be used on your opponent's turn. It'll basically interrupt a zombie card that's being played on you, and it'll actually put it into your opponent's zombie pile. So it's an offensive and a defensive ability. Then if I want, I can play a neutralization. I think I'll do that. This one says I can play a defender, attack up to 20 zombies in my pool, and thusly removing them. So I want to do that to keep my zombie zombie pool from being too crazy. If I get to 100, I'm in trouble. And then after that, I'm going to end my turn, and it'll be his turn now, and he's going to do the same thing. He's going to go ahead and look at his building. He'll be able to choose two or draw three. He'll go ahead and draw three now, and then he's going to need to play some civilians. Does he have any civilians that he can play? He does. I think he does. He's got this one here. This is a one. It says when you play this card, choose a card from the civilian in the town square and put it on here. So I'll go ahead and choose this one. And when this is played into your building, you may draw a new card from the building deck and add it to your hand. So he'll go ahead ahead and do that. Another card from the building deck. Not too bad, not too bad. And then he can go ahead and play zombies. He'll play 10 zombies on me, and he's got a neutralizer, which he'll play as well. That says he can attack up to four zombies. Here is the instance where that's going to be relevant. So he'll discard this five here, and he's going to add one token here representing one zombie on his side of the pool, along with these three, which is four. And then, of course, he's going to end his turn. He's got five cards, so he's okay. And remember to fill up the town square whenever you go ahead and draw a new one. And the game is going to continue from there. There's a of different cards in the game in which you're going to be able to play. Of course, lots of neutralizing cards, zombies that go berserk, civilian navigators that let you pick to the town hall, and then, of course, civilians and zombie cards that you can choose either or. Hitting that point in which you're going to have 50 civilians in the safe zone is going to save you and win you the game, or, of course, if you have 100 zombies in your horde, you're going to lose the game, and that affects either player. And that's the basic idea of the game. All right, let me show you some caveats and talk about the game above. Okay, so a couple caveats now. The first one being that whenever you discard a card, it's going to go into your zombie horde. You don't want to draw too much, which is why you have a bunch of buildings where this one only has a need of five civilians. You can go ahead and choose to take four cards from the town hall, which is great, but you can't draw too many cards because remember, it's going to go to your zombie horde when you have to discard. Also, you can't discard buildings, so make sure you choose them very carefully. When you're pulling buildings and you're placing them down, it's going to take an action on your turn to do so, and you might not be able to do certain things because of them. There's also some other crazy buildings in here that will require a whole bunch of civilians, one of them being this building here, which is going to be needing 50, which is enough to win you the game. However, when the buildings are in the open building area, that is when you can lose civilians and you can lose other... Th you, can, you can basically lose civilians from your open building areas. The safe areas are safe. Once you have your civilians and buildings in there, no one can touch them, which is very important. So you can go ahead and choose to go all in, or you can simply choose to uh, pull them at five or ten at a time until you can get that coveted 50 points you need. Not only that, though, but you're also going to have all the different neutralization cards and whatnot that are going to try and either destroy zombies or use them um, on your opponent's turn to re redirect zombies that were going to go into your horde and put them into their horde. So that's the basic idea of the game. So what do I think about the game last one in? Well, first of all, this is a one-on-one -on -one ga combative game in which you're just trying to score as many points as you can. There's a little bit of tableau management as far as the building goes, as far as choices go, and there's a bunch of, like, back and forth zombie take that aspects in the game. You're going to be wanting to choose whether or not you need to neutralize your own zombies or neutralize your own opponent's civilians. That's going to be based on the gameplay and how well they are doing, how well you are doing. And of course, it's very easy for you to get 100 zombies in your horde. As you saw in just one of the turns there, I got 20 in my horde, but it's just as easy to destroy them at the cost of not being able to play more civilians into your open building zone. As you go and play out throughout the game, uh, you're going to notice there's going to be a fluctuation of up and down and the ability to choose to draw from the deck as well as to choose to draw from the town hall. Now, of course, drawing from the town hall is going to be useful because you're going to be able to pull them and you know what they are. However, sometimes you can get lucky with pulls from the deck. There are better cards than others, obviously. Some of them are going to be like one zombie, five civilians, or vice versa, or destroy 20 zombies, or place 10 civilians in, and those are super coveted, super useful cards. But at the same time, it's really, really dependent on how you want to play the game. It's very straightforward as far as tactical decision-making goes, but it has a bunch of little addi additional things that kind of make 
makes the game nice. I like the quality of the game. I think that it's obviously a, a prototype here, so I'm excited to see the better chits, the better board layout. It's a nice two-player competitive game. It's not necessarily a game in which you're just going to sit down in between games. It's kind of right there in the middle as far as games where, like, if you like two-player competitive games, you're going to enjoy this one. The artwork is really nice. I really like that. Of course, all of these here have a review copy on them, but the artwork's super cool and super post-apocalyptic-y. It kind of reminds me of the game um, Post-Human, and it has that, like, feel of, like, the zombies are coming up. It's obviously a zombie game, so you're either going to be loving the zombie genre, or you're going to be kind of like, oh, I'm tired of zombies. I, I, it's, it's, I'm up in the air with it. I've always liked zombie games. I've always liked horror stuff, so it doesn't really bother me. The map makes sense. It makes, uh, perfect. It, it makes it really easy to understand how to place the tokens then and whatnot. And I like the tokens. I think that was a very good additional aspect in the game. I also like that there's dice, and some of the zombies you're going to be using to roll the dice, and it'll have different effects throughout the game. There's a bunch of different cards in the game, and they have a bunch of different effects, which makes it really nice as well. Uh, all right, I'm going to give this game a solid right down the middle. I think if you like zombie games, if you like two-player tech that slash tableau management games, you're probably going to like this one. If you don't like the zombie theme, if you're not a big fan of 2v2, uh, 1v1 games, and if you don't like the basic aspect of take that, you might not be interested in this one. Overall, though, I suggest you go ahead and check out the campaign in the Kickstarter below, if this sounds like, in the description below, if this sounds like something you'd be interested in. All right, let me go ahead and get to the outro. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, go check out our other videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. It all helps. We do greatly appreciate it. As well as checking out Last One In, a game about zombies and 2v1 v competitive take that action and a little bit of tableau management as well. As well as checking our website unfilteredgamer.com. We've got tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. And checking out our friends at everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek. They've got tons of blog posts and giveaways too. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to seeing you next time. Ah!